Hello, good good day, good morning, and good evening for me. Indeed, I have evening, late evening uh, now, but that's why online is great that we can connect. Doesn't matter what time we have. And today I'm gonna talk about zero bone loss concepts and probably more about uh, zero bone loss concepts immediate. Uh, but before we go there, let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, uh, as mentioned, I am, my name is Thomas Linkavichus. I'm coming from Vilnius, uh, Lithuania. Uh, and currently I'm uh, serving as a professor in, in Vilnius University, also a director of private research center and a clinician, just like everybody of you, I'm working every day so I stay in touch with all what is happening. The best way to find me is now follow me on Instagram. I have almost 40,000 followers. So if you want to learn more and hear more about today's topic, so please join and we will continue uh, discussing over there. Well, what is zero bone loss concepts? It's actually uh, the protocol, the procedure which allows us to have bone stability in delayed implants because uh, all this concept was developed uh, having uh, not immediate implants in mind. Well, that was done in 15 years. And what our team managed to do is actually that we can have a protocol in different, let's say, uh, implant connections, different uh, uh, implant uh, level or bottom end level restorations. So that is kind of clear to me. And I don't have this issue of bone loss for already 10 years. However, what was very, how to say, interesting for me, how the, do these principles apply uh, as you can see here on your screen, again, implant design, a prosthetic design, uh, implant position, uh, soft uh, or bone uh, tissue augmentation. How do these principles uh, combine if we talk about immediate? Uh, because immediate is, let's say, different kind of treatment with very, very, uh, many advantages. And I just say this, that let's say uh, five years ago, I was almost doing no immediates. And now I look at every extraction as a possibility to do immediate. So what happened to me? Why did I transit into this uh, completely, let's say different treatment? And uh, the purpose of today's seminar is not to tell you that delayed or early implant placement is bad. Of course, it has uh, its place in our treatment protocols. However, I think the purpose of our meeting today is really look um, why immediate is, has so many advantages and even more so why having in mind that immediate is, uh, is uh, uh, very good for the patient and us uh, uh, and clinicians, why we still think that it's risky and uh, tend to avoid it. So uh, what would you do in this clinical case? When you see a extraction socket, you see a available bone, and uh, what would be your strategy? I mean, to place the implant, to do nothing, or maybe graft the socket? And I think that the answer to that question actually starts from what is in our heads. I mean, if we think that immediate is risky, we won't even consider doing it here and just close the path for, 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 for this treatment. And uh, if we would look at surgical techniques and why I think a lot of clinicians start from delayed implant placement, as you can see here on the left side of the screen, is 
because it's actually placing implant in delayed approach. It's easier. You just have yield rich, you play, make a startomy, you place the implant, while in extraction socket, you have a hole. And now uh, from, let's say, implant position point of view, it is, I think, more difficult to get it right in immediate implant situation. So uh, before we talk further, there is certain advantages of uh, immediate implant placement, which cannot be overcome by delayed implant placement. In other words, if we do something delayed, it means that we cannot turn the time back and cannot uh, get the advantages of immediate implant placement. We all know for sure that if we extract the tooth and do nothing, or maybe no grafting, or maybe less grafting, you're going to have this kind of situation. You're going to have the collapse. Of course, uh, the question is, so do we, are, are we afraid of that collapse? What us this collapse of the tissues would give? Because we usually tend to talk about immediate implant placement in anterior region for aesthetic point of view and, and uh, difficult to dispute their advantages. And usually molars, premolars or posterior regions are downgraded saying that, oh, we just need implant integration over there. So if I have this case, like see you, you see it here, uh, and I believe in immediate implant placement. So uh, I'm, I, I think of uh, uh, evaluation of the root. Uh, okay, so I have sufficient bone. I have, uh, yeah, I have inflammation. So do I stop here and uh, do I extract tooth because I have uh, chronic inflammation and do not go for immediate? <laughs> here we go, the different path. So after tooth extraction, I have sufficient amount of uh, interdental, uh, interceptal bone, and I place the implant according, let's say, to the, uh, to the socket type. This means that I'm not trying fully to engage the wall, uh, in, uh, interceptal wall, but I uh, try to play it around. And the goal is here actually to make the implant stable. So I place the implant uh, according to its position. And important here, of course, uh, implant placement is just a first step, let's say in immediate treatment. There are sequence of the steps. Uh, one of the crucial ones is really to make an individual healing abutment. And I always look at the immediate implant treatment as a prosthetic treatment, not as a implant integration because implant will integrate. Even if you do nothing, you just place the implant in extraction socket, let it collapse and it will integrate. So let's not discuss the implant integration. We must talk about what you see here on the screen, how the tissues are maintained and how nice the healing is just after four months. So this is what you see when I removed individual healing abutment and the tissues really look excellent. What I need to do, you know, just to make a final restoration. And now look at this X-ray, you know, zero bone loss immediate and look at the soft tissues. So tell me now, if you think that immediate is risky, so did I do something wrong here? Did I, I mean, did I expose my patient to uh, additional uh, threat or uh, to additional risk and myself as a clinician? So that's why it's important when we talk about immediate, of course, first of all, talk about what we think. Uh, the goal is, really to tell why immediate is good because techniques, it's, 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 it's relatively easy to learn. It's, it's not that difficult, especially if you're doing guided surgery. So it's even more easy. But the point is 
that from extraction to this final restoration, I had four months and you see that tissues almost did not change. So this is one of the biggest advantages of immediate implant placement, preserving of the tissues from prosthetic point of view. And this result, let me tell you, it would be impossible, simply impossible with delayed restoration, delayed implant placement. Doesn't matter what you do. And I'll later share some very exciting, interesting cases when I did on one side immediate and on the other side, I did delayed uh, conventional implant placement. And you'll see how it's really difficult to impossible. Look at this case, look at the contour. So this is the power really of immediate implant placement. So if we do not immediately do immediate, you must then think about accepting this kind of situation that you can see here on the left side of your screen. So it's collapse of the tissues, no contour. And now tell me in which situation you will have more food impaction or more food accumulation and less satisfaction of the patients. It, for us, it might look that, you know, well, maybe, you know, it's a small thing uh, uh, or food impaction and let's say dissatisfaction of the patient, but actually we would be very wrong because studies really show that food impaction is most unreported complication of which patient feels. Uh, there are several studies who show, for example, that if there is no papillar fill, like here, you can see on the uh, right side, this is immediate implant placement with the restoration. So you can see a, a lot of papilla. And in, on the left screen, you see that this is delayed implant placement with absent ap papilla. So here you have your black triangles and it's been shown that these triangles will be filled by food after every meal. Almost 50% of our patients in delayed implant placement suffer from food impaction. And uh, we'll say it's uh, maybe sounds, well, not important, but if you would ask your patient, uh, he would tell you that you know, it's, uh, I don't want to think about you uh, like after every lunch because I need to go and clean. So a lot of patients accept this as an avoidable issue. So they, of course, do not complain. But if you would ask them, they will tell you that, you know, everything is fine, is chewing, but uh, after every meal, I need to go in and clean my teeth. Uh, it's been reported that, you know, uh, from patient satisfaction point of view, the uh, 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 food accumulation is significant factor which lowers satisfaction of the patient. So this is what we really must keep in mind when we are extracting our molars and premolars and thinking of, well, should they do immediate or not? Uh, as I said, first of all, it starts from us as the clinicians, do we believe in that treatment? But the second is, of course, the patient. And if we think, and if we know that one of our treatment choices gives more satisfaction to the patient, so of course we must really think about working for the benefit of the patient. From the other point of view, a food impaction might not be so innocent because it's been shown that constant food around our restorations, very similar like plague accumulation, really can influence perimucositis, development of perimucositis and maybe probably perimplantitis. So just think about this, that in the long term, if you do not have papilla, or if you have not, do not have 
sufficient or profile of the restoration, those spaces would be really filled by food and food accumulation and plague. So this is kind of significant when you really start to think about it. Of course, from aesthetical point of view, so here is, I think, less debate about why we need the contour, because, you know, we just talked about posterior, so contour in posterior regions is needed not for aesthetics, of course, it comes when you maintain it, you have aesthetical restoration in posterior as well, but that might be maybe for you as a clinician, for us as a clinicians, a satisfaction that we performed our treatment very well. Uh, but main obstacle and main, go main goal of posterior immediate, if of course, maintaining the contour and then maintaining proper function of uh, posterior teeth functioning without food infection. So in anterior, of course, we do not dispute and nobody really talking about food because of course, aesthetics is our main issue here. And if we can have, like you see here, pre-treatment situation and post-treatment situation, and if we can leave, let's say, maintain this profile with immediate implant placement, so I think this is our goal, to have aesthetics maintained easy. Let's look at this case when you have failing incisor, uh, so extraction, of incisor and implant placement is a, a priority here. And after evaluation of the patient and soft tissues and the bone, uh, I decided that we need to do immediate implant placement, a careful extraction of the root. And now, yeah, here you go, you have already extracted tooth and soft tissues. So again, I'll go back to this, what I talked before, if we do not believe in immediate, and if we think it's risky, so we would probably let this collapse or try to graft something which is not really predictable. So I think that believing in this uh, treatment and executing it well, because um, implant placement, as I said, is just one step in immediate implant treatment. So very important, but just one. So placing of the implant, then grafting of the tissues, grafting of the jumping distance with the bone, then a crucial step, a really important step to give a provisional to all this, uh, all this treatment, because really to, to protect the graft and also to maintain the tissues uh, with the provisional restoration, uh, which of course is needed to be taken out of the occlusion, taking out of the mandibular movements. But the point is, of course, to follow all these steps, not to stop just, let's say, in the middle of the race, but to follow up till the final finish. And here you go. Look, this is really clinically very easy. So I don't need to be a super skilled surgeon, super skilled uh, pros, uh, periodontist doing difficult procedures and soft tissue grafts. Look, this is just, uh, uh, I think, uh, every day's uh, dentist work, you know, to place the implant and then to follow the protocol. And then you have these tissues which are maintained by biology, by understanding it, and you have a final outcome, final restoration, if not super aesthetic, super sexy, as we can see here because uh, of the natural patient teeth, which let's say patient did not want to change anything uh, just to, to make one tooth. But, but here, what we are not talking about, let's say, the, the shape and the color of the tooth. We're talking about how we manage to maintain soft tissues around the implants, how we manage really to keep everything intact 
and successfully end this kind of restoration. So immediate in implant, immediate in anterior region, yeah, I think this is an excellent way to, to work. However, what is the alternative then? If we do not do immediate, what does it leave us with? It leaves us with delayed or error implant placement. So first of all, of course, you will never ever have, uh, if you do not do immediate, you will never have uh, the contour maintained. We can discuss if soft tissue, let's say socket uh, preservation can reduce uh, the collapse or sometimes this bone grafting also may fail. And you can end up in, in uh, this kind of ridge, as you can see it here. So, of course, there is a way to reconstruct it. Yeah. Implant placement, soft tissue grafting, bone grafting, additional graftings, everything that is really possible. <coughs> However, and look, we've been quite successful here. If we look like, I mean, from a critical point of view, there is an implant, there is some kind of tissue thickness, but look, if we compare to immediate, we still, after this difficult way, are not even close to preserve what I had been able to preserve with immediate implant. And to make delayed implant placement and reconstructions, of course, this is more difficult, requires, it's a more expensive, four surgeries instead one surgery. So at the end of the day, if immediate is better and easy, why do we think that delayed is worth doing? So uh, in order really to go on and talk about uh, uh, immediate, we must ask, answer this question. So why, when we just look at these, let's say, case, cases which I showed, why do we still think that immediate is risky? Because like when I'm doing seminars or doing courses or doing uh, uh, presentations about immediate, I usually ask this question. So who thinks immediate is risky? And it's almost 100% 50-50. Half of the audience says it's risky, and the half the audience says it isn't risky. So where <coughs> does uh, this idea that immediate is risky comes from? Because uh, in order, when you know, when you go to psychology, there's always if you have some fears, okay, of doing something or not doing something, because I already believe this is also in a psychological point of view an issue. So you must face your fears. You must, first of all, understand where does it come from? And uh, I, I, I put this kind of different ways, different four reasons why we think that immediate implants are risky. Uh, it's more looks like a vicious circle or, or a bad circle where the cause is also the reason uh, and the result of the other cause. And, Usually, if you think the immediate is risky, you can have the answer that it's kind of new treatment. You know that, of course, uh, there are some immediates who are not done properly, but that's the same with delayed restoration, delayed implant placement. If we place implant bad in a delayed way, we do not stop placing implants delayed just because we, some implant was placed in the wrong position. So it's a matter not of the treatment, it's a matter, of course, of the, of the professionalism of the dentist. But I think what I want to really to talk a little bit more today is this, uh, is this reason, uh, and I call the strong educational attitude against the media. It means that there are certain organizations and certain, let's say, treatment and points of view who tell you, look, don't do it because it's risky, because it's, you will, you know, have a recession 
uh, or, 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 or something else. And usually this is very, very influential. And sometimes you can really have, uh, um, how to say, generations of dentist thinking that immediate treatment is bad. One of those really influential papers, which formed for many years, like no attitude towards immediate is systematic reviews. One of them is uh, proceedings of the fifth ITI consensus conference, where they really uh, looked at all, um, let's say immediate versus early implant placement uh, studies and came up with the conclusion that recession of the facial mucosa is common with immediate type implant placement. So for example, if you go to PubMed, so this is PubMed, let's say uh, the most important scientific side in the world, and you type immediate implants, you will end up again with this systematic review. And uh, if you read the conclusion, because you know, usually what is done, read the conclusion, you would find again the same, uh, the same outcome, which I said, that recession of facial mucosa is common with immediate type implant placement. So for a scientific person and the person, well, who is not, let's say does not have 20 years of experience, this should be enough not to do immediate. Because look, you know, systematic review, uh, everything you know is very well organized. And if you come up with the conclusion that you have recession, so surely you will think twice before doing that. But you know what, in general, what a systematic review is. So systematic review is a very tricky thing. It kind of collects uh, different studies which might not be sim similar, which might not be similar. And then it, it kind of analyzes them and comes up with the one conclusion, which you just heard. So I looked at this randomized control clinical trial uh, of this systematic review and look, so uh, this is the table from that systematic review. There were six randomized control clinical trials included in that study. So uh, if we would talk what true systematic review is, is actually there should be only randomized controlled clinical trials included because that's, let's say, the, the main purpose of systematic review. So I looked at these uh, six studies, uh, randomized controlled clinical trials, and if we think that, let's say, that immediate is bad, it means that these six studies should support that conclusion. Or at least, I don't know, half pro and half negative. So there should be some bad outcome in those uh, studies, uh, which you see here, which would support the conclusion that immediate uh, implants are risky. So let's look at those studies. So I, I looked at those studies, I gathered all of them, analyzed, and uh, the first study done by, by, by Chen et al, they looked at immediate implants and the outcome of that study really said indeed that there is mucosal recession, the adverse soft tissue aesthetics with immediate implant placement. However, when we look at what was being done in that study, so you can see that the tissue level implants were used in anterior region, and uh, also they were placed a little bit buccally. So of course, you know, if you really place immediate implants like that, so you should expect a soft tissue, soft tissue recession. However, I would say that uh, at least this is not, let's say the best uh, immediate implant placement and for surely now we have completely different protocols. So no provisionals were used here, but of course, first of all, you know, the buccal positioning of, of, of the implant really causes the recession. But anyway, so let's say this study says that immediate is bad and we really 
uh, we, we really agree with that. Now, the second study is already not that convincing. The results say that, look, there is no difference between two kinds of treatments. Well, the third study, which analyzed, said completely the opposite. So Block et al., uh, they placed implants immediately, and they also did bone grafting of the jumping distance, and they also used provisional. So this was kind of more conventional immediate implant placement, which we uh, are doing now. And result was the opposite. So result was that there was more recession in the delayed group, not in immediate group. The same outcome was also confirmed in Tim Deruk's study, where he showed that uh, more recession was with delayed implants. So I would say less recession with immediate. So immediate was uh, better here. And further studies uh, by uh, Felicia found no difference between both treatments. And the last study, which I wanted to discuss, also uh, made the result that gingival aesthetics, radiographic bone resorption were not significantly different between immediate implants and delayed implants. So in summary, in summary, we have this, that immediate is better. You have two studies, that there is no difference. You have three studies and that immediate is worse aesthetically. It's just one study. Also having in mind that tissue level implants were placed there and also some in buccal position. So uh, for me, I mean, so the outcome, you know, kind of uh, does not really correspond to what has been analyzed here. And of course, you know, some new studies were added and uh, surely systematic reviews, when they lack the data, they include more studies of less importance. However, uh, randomized controlled clinical trials, they were six so really sufficient amount to make a conclusion. And that conclusion was done that there is a, a recession uh, around immediate implant placement. However, from my point of view, it's not really that. I think this study, you know, an an analysis of six randomized controlled clinical trials to me says that there is no evidence that immediate implant placement is accompanied by facial mucosa if we follow the immediate protocol which is being proposed. So uh, that's, you know, kind of, you know, changing. And even the first, let's say, systematic review, you know, could be doubtful. If we look further, let's say in 2018, uh, another systematic review says the opposite, that uh, immediate implant placement type A1, you can see it here with most successful 98.4% uh, different Im implant placement uh, treatments were analyzed. And uh, now the, uh, the conclusion was that the most predictable is immediate implant placement with immediate restoration. In other words, if we will summarize this, I think that there is no any scientific risk and uh, any, let's say, uh, bad uh, outcome of immediate. It depends, of course, how you do it. But the treatment itself is not more risky than delayed restoration. I would say it's more advantageous than early or delayed implant placement. Now, let me to illustrate this with uh, one of the nice cases, one of the first cases I did in immediate molars, and that case really changed the way I look at immediate. And from that point of view, from that, let's say patient, I really realized that, you know, I must do more immediate 
and I must uh, really understand this concept of treatment. So uh, the case was really simple. Now, when I look back uh, five years ago, I mean, this is a really 100% immediate case. But anyway, so uh, I had to extract, extract this molar. So the molar was extracted. And uh, you know, when I'm looking at this no bone, the original plan was that I will need to leave uh, for, you know, to, to heal and then place implant in delayed, in delayed approach. However, you know, I said to the patient, okay, now let's try to do immediate. And the patient said, okay, let's do that. So I placed the implant. And then when I look now at this implant placement, you can see actually this is probably not even immediate. You no, know, this is type A socket. So implant is fully, fully covered with a native bone. Uh, so I place the implant. Then uh, I did the individual healing abutment. And then, you know, you just follow up the patient. So this is how it looks after one week. Well, everything looks really nice. After one month, yeah, there is a little bit shrinkage of, of, of the tissues. However, still everything's perfect. And when the patient returns after four months post-operative, now it's time ready to remove that individual healing abutment. So I'm doing that and you see, you know, wow, this is from prosthetic point of view because I look at it immediate for the eyes of prosthodontists is so cool. You have tissues maintained, the good position of the implant. You know what you just do, you just, you don't need any provisional. Everything has been preserved for you. You make the impression or you scan and then you just deliver the final restoration. And that's not the end. So after this, you will see that the tissues and the bone will really get only better with time. So after one year, you see, and after three years, you see again uh, growth of the patella. You see everything really getting better and better. And uh, that's really the power of media. That's the power of really changing your mind and changing your point of view. What about the bone? Placement, four months, delivery. Yeah, no bone changes. After one year, no changes. After three years, yes, I see changes, but only positive. So that's zero bone loss concept immediate. The position of the implant, how it should be placed, and you see the bone is getting more dense, it's mineralized. So actually, this is what I want to see under, under each, uh, with each patient, I, uh, I place the implant. And also, I have only a positive outcome for the soft tissues as well. So for the same patient, actually, on the other side, we had a delayed implant placement because, well, the tooth was extracted many years ago. And you see what's happening with the tissues. So how can we now say that delayed implant here is more successful than immediate? I mean, when you think about this is, this is completely not true. Now, how many steps will I need to take to try to reconstruct there the profile? Because we're not talking about the bone. So with the bone, we all know. So the, you see the implant is placed. I grafted a little bit bone buckley, also used soft tissue thickening uh, uh, membrane and then uh, healing after in two stage surgeries, you see the implant is submerged. After four months, I'm going to make a re-entry. So I make a healing abutment and uh, push some tissues buccally, try to really uh, create more soft tissue profile, uh, healing of the tissues after certain stage surgery and yet, so the placement and the final, final uh, outcome, yeah, the tissues look more bulky, right? They, of course, look better. Uh, and it's sufficient for the implant. But we are not talking about the implant. We're talking about the restoration and the patient. 
So now tell me what will happen after each food with this tooth. I will tell you, there will be constant food infection because probably I should be grafting even more here. But maybe in the beginning, I should not place implant in a delayed approach. I should place implant immediately because uh, don't be mistaken, as already said, that uh, you know, food impaction is, 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 is nothing. When you look at the uh, factors for perimplantitis, per one of them is poor contours of the restoration. And this is what you clearly see. In this case, it was impossible really to make a good contour because we lack the tissues, but generally this, uh, this restoration is prone to really collect, uh, collect plague and, and collect uh, uh, food remnants. So of course, with the, with the bone, we do not really have any issues with immediate, <coughs> excuse me, or with the delayed, but the point of course, of course here is prosthetical. Maintaining of the contour, which would really give you a good outcome. Now the final, let's say, take on immediates, and we will still be having 10 minutes for questions and answers, is with um, uh, ultra-wide implants. That's another part, uh, how to say, of implant design, which has been vilified, you know, that they don't work, that they, they you know, resorb the bone, or, or all these different things. So in general, it's, of course, it depends on the clinical situation. So from my point of view, I'm placing super wide diameter, it means seven, eight millimeter width implant when I want to engage another position, or say another part of the socket. So if, for example, I do not have interceptum and I cannot place implant deeper, I must engage buccolingual wolf in more deeper position. Uh, that's why we need wide diameter implants. And if you engage, get the primary stability. So there is no difference between wide implant and a normal length implant. And again, it's been just, you know, vilified that it has more bone resorption or more failures. Uh, in the past, of course, uh, wide implants were, were created like a rescue implants when you place this implant when you do not have possibility to place a normal uh, diameter implant. However, now the implant designs and philosophies completely change. So I do not look at a wide implant <coughs> as an implant for a little bit, let's say, more risk, it just is the matter of the indication. And if by placing a wide diameter implant allows me really to keep all these soft tissue contour or to keep all the benefits of immediate implant placement, so why we would not do it? I'm doing it because it's not <clears throat> the diameter of implant, which is kind of, you know, willified and we should be afraid of, it's actually, first of all, the philosophy and uh, immediate implant placement, which allows us really to get all the benefit. So actually, I call this 5H thing, uh, five hows. Uh, if you know all those hows, it means that you will be successful in immediate implant placement. So you should know how mid implants integrate, how the contour is maintained, and how the soft tissues uh, are developed, and how to have crystal bone stability with immediate implants, and of course, how to achieve primary stability. So if you really have those things, it means then you would really, really be successful immediate implant placement. But first step, of course, is to change the mind. And let's say five years ago with this route, uh, I would extract it, I would clean the socket, I would let it heal, and then 
follow all that delayed implant placement path. Now what has changed? I'm thinking that I can do this implant immediately. So I extract, I place the implant, and this is how I end up with the ideal restoration for the patient is faster, for the clinician is faster, everybody is happy, and you just really should start from changing your point of view. Now, uh, I really uh, want to finish up here because we'll have questions and answers. Uh, before we do that, this is my code. You can scan it and uh, it land in educational site. So if you would be interested really to learn more and about immediate, because why to do immediate, you know, it is on site, but really how to do that, you can really learn online in my educational platform. And by the way, this is the code which you could use and it will give you a substantial discount if you want really to apply now. So with this, I really want to thank you for your kind attention. And um, I really enjoyed this. Um, next year, I will be lecturing in the USA also with this immediate implant, uh, uh, zero bone loss concept immediate. And I hope uh, you liked it and see you there. And now let's look at some questions if we have. Uh, I see some of them are there. So let's uh, start to answer them. Thank you. Okay, so the first question is, uh, What's the rationale for immediate implant placement uh, where the tooth has a gingival recession? Uh, so it's, um, uh, there is a, a classification by Dr. Uh, uh, by Dr. Khan and uh, uh, where he really shows which kind of recession can be treated by immediate or cannot be treated by immediate. Uh, and I think that's also depending on, is it multiple recessions? Like it's like all the, all the teeth are with recessions or single one recession. So surely if this is your first case, I would say, you know, do not start with that kind of uh, placement with recession. Uh, choose really some, uh, some, uh, uh, more easy case. Uh, can you do immediate with surgical guide? Surely, so now I do all immediates with surgical guides. I started with freehand, but now, uh, and with surgical guide, it's even more easy because you always land in the proper position of the implant. So it's then, uh, it's, it has even more advantages from my point of view. Uh, do you place immediate implant in type two socket in Ontario? Yes, uh, uh, and you really need to graft and also take soft tissue graft from the palate. So it is when you have to type, just grafting of the bone is not sufficient and you should use uh, soft tissue graft as well. Are you using barrier over your grafts? Yeah, so it is individual healing abutment. Uh, how, uh, this is how I make it. How do you make custom healing abutment or individual? So there are two ways. I really describe them in my online location. One I made uh, on site, let's say with a provisional restoration and composite. And now when you switch to CAT CAM, or, uh, or guided surgery, you ask the lab, they make it prefabricate uh, before your implant placement. So then your surgery reduces like, you know, to in a half, you place the implant, you graft, and then you make a custom healing abutment. And by the way, the contour, which you are seeing here, you see this is made with custom healing abutment. So everything looks like, you know, natural too. So this is, prosthetic point of view, prosthetic vision of immediate implant placement. 
Yeah, so do you have webinar about provisionals? Uh, yes, so uh, there is uh, uh, one module in immediate uh, masterclass when I show and there are uh, live videos how to make this chair site individual healing abutment. What materials do you use for abutments temporary and permanent? Uh, so for temporary abutments, I use uh, uh, I, I use uh, the the uh, composite, uh, and if it's made in the lab, we use composite as well. And for final, I use only zirconia. In the presence of infection or abscess, a contraindication for immediate implant placement. I would say that if it's uh, active infection with suppuration. I would say that yes, but if it's chronic, which you have uh, seen here, so you just really clean it uh, and then you proceed with implant placement. Uh, do you consider use PRF instead of soft tissue? No, uh, PRF is, you know, just uh, maintaining the, of, the, of the space. So it has no really, uh, you cannot compare to its soft tissue because uh, uh, some clinicians use PRF instead of bone grafting in posterior. But then again, it depends on philosophy. They lose the contour. So if you uh, use PRF, you have less contour, that's for sure. But then you'd say, okay, maybe I don't need that in posterior because it's not aesthetic. But from my point of view, uh, I want contour in posterior, not for aesthetics. I want contour for the patient satisfaction. And shrinkage of contour creates food entrapment, which patients are not happy about this. And also it can lead to later inflammation because the contour of prosthesis, then if the contour of the tissues is reduced, is not possible to make a correct contour of prosthesis because the occlusal, occlusal table must be where it is. So the molar must be wide and that creates over contouring just by itself. So I think that Contour is a uh, soft tissue contour is as important in posterior as important in anterior. So that's, that's how I look at it. Uh, do socket preservation technique preserve 100% soft tissue and hard tissue structure? No, it does not. Of course, it's uh, better than you no know, doing nothing, but uh, uh, I think that immediate implant placement and let's say the, all the protocol is this way to really preserve everything. Are you using Versa burrs for immediates? Uh, yes, uh, not in all the cases, uh, but uh, especially when I want to expand, let's say this interceptal bone, then it is really, uh, I think, uh, a, a, a common, uh, a good way to use Versa Burst. Uh, uh, are you using barrier over your graft? So I think I already answered it. So yes, so graft and you use individual healing abutment. So there is nothing between healing abutment and the graft if you, if you, if you press that. Oh, there's one more question. What's your opinion on socket shield technique? Uh, so, uh, uh, I admit I did not try it. I have few colleagues who were, were, were skeptical, but once they tried it, they now do not do anything else. Uh, I think that, yeah, it works if you manage it, if you really you know manage it. So I think uh, that really should work. Is there a possibility to have consultations with you live chat uh, for PhD? So uh, 
email me uh, on my educational site. Uh, there is an email there. And uh, yeah, we can, we can discuss because I, I have a few clinicians who I have this kind of private consultation. So we discuss cases. So I think it's really important for growing, especially if you are really, you want to change point of view from delay to immediate. And I am good advisor for that because that happened to me. You know, as I said, five years ago, I was doing zero immediate. I was all delayed implant placement. And uh, now uh, I, I think, you know, I was wrong in many cases, which could be better if I would have thinking differently in the past. Uh, when you are coming to the US, so I'm coming to US on, on, on March. There will be, I think, uh, several lectures. Uh, if you want to follow up, keep up with Megagen America. They will probably announce shortly the schedule. So the so on on March we I, I'm there. So we are welcome to the lectures where I'll discuss more and and we will talk more about uh, this um, immediate implant placement. Okay, uh, how do you feel about immediate implants with buccal bone loss? If using uh, if using P uh, membrane PDF membrane uh, with odontogenous and allograft, so uh, it's actually you know a, a good way. It's kind of immediate, but not 100% immediate. It means that if you do not really have absent, let's say, buccal uh, plate, so you still place the implant, and then you open the flap. And then you do grafting with bone and the, the membrane, and then you cover everything. So this is kind of what you win, what you lose. So you win that you place implant immediately. It means that you just implant is placed faster. What you lose, surely for that kind of treatment, you cannot make a, a customized healing abutment. So you must usually hide such a do it submerged way, but you know, uh, at the second stage surgery, then you can do grafting and also roll flap, a little bit push tissues buccally, really to try to, to uh, maintain, to uh, get the contour back. I think that still it is uh, better than, you know, to extract the tooth and, and do nothing. How deep you should place the implant if doing immediate? Oh, so very important question and the last one, because usually that's, I will tell you this, uh, the biggest mistake is placed too shallow. Uh, I always think about having four millimeters. So that's, that's how I look at immediate implant placement. So sometimes it's better to go too deep because then you can really, uh, there are ways how to bring that implant up, yeah, with, with different solutions. But when it's too shallow, then you nothing you can do. So I would say that keep this in mind while placing the implant. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for, for your questions. Uh, I, I, I hope you like this. I really enjoyed this topic because this is a new topic and I really enjoy speaking about immediates. So uh, see you in the US and also uh, see you on my educational site if you find it interesting. Thank you very much.